Thanks <laughs> for staying with us. <laughs> My director <laughs> is cracking me up. All right, so Isi, <laughs> oh dear. what did you find for us in the news? In the news today, is, it's kind of um, related to our topic for today, okay. and which is about women in um, governance mm. or corporate governance. And I totally agree with RBG when she said that, quote, that women belong to uh, the key areas of uh, decision, decision making. Yeah, making, of course. So um, this is a thumbs up for, for uh, Shell. Basically, they have the first female MD. Hmm. And her name is Eloho Aiboni. She's the first managing director of Shell. And um, it was confirmed in uh, Loretta Noche's, uh, one of the aides of uh, the president, uh, Twitter handle. And she said that it is about time we, you know, a, um, accord respect to women, which is something that has, um, I think it has gone a long way. We have done something good in, a, in bringing her on board. Mm. And she's, um, she's taken over from uh, Osage Okumbo, who has been on as the managing director of Shell since uh, 2015. Wow. So I think it's a thumbs up for women. It's a good thing. Women wow. do belong to that position. It would be nice right to now. read her resume because, you mm. see, Another thing, I mean, we were having a conversation with Eric when he was talking about some big brother thing, trying to appoint oh. a female <laughs> anchor instead of a bukad that has always done it for years. Mm -hmm. I say to people that, first of all, if somebody is competent at the job, you know, let them Why be. Change? Do you understand? You know, exactly. but you see, if you want to also get a woman involved, she has to be 10 times better. Mm -hmm. Not because she's a woman, mm -hmm. but she because she's actually... Competent. Extremely competent and can now do... Because it be quite is quite good. And another thing is this: women tend to, you know, go the extra mile. They do more than is expected of them because of they have to outdo what because the they man have to prove, has you know, done. Yeah. Yes, they have something to prove at every point in time. Mm -hmm. So, if anybody is going to step into a Buka's shoes, she, hmm. the, the person has a big is, shoe to it feel. Is much it's to it's, I mean, much. so I, I really commend them, and I, I would love to actually read her uh, her, resume her resume and see, you know why she was appointed because i'm sure she has paid her dues so it's not just totally. because she is a woman and totally. i don't want us to start i mean have all those notions oh because i'm a woman mm. Eh. Mm. if i'm competent at the work and i can deliver 10 times better please i think for her to have risen to that ladder mm. in the first place because you know for a woman to rise up in nigeria mm -hmm. you have to be competent yeah totally they, the men don't just hand it over to you on a platter of gold mm -hmm. you have to work for it so i think totally she is competent she absolutely. should be able to deliver absolutely. on it okay so my own we're back to nigeria <laughs> <laughs> oh nigeria nigeria police partner hunters as three abducted in Oshun. um mm. 50 million naira was demanded um, so some gunmen had abducted three passengers in Oshun's uh, town, Osu town rather, along uh, Ife Elisha Expressway in Oshun State. Uh, one of those abducted identified simply as um, Simplias Usman, who was said to be the brother of um, the Seriki of Hausa in Yere town. Mm. And, you know, the victims were said to have been taken into the forest in um, Osu after their vehicle was intercepted by the gunmen. So police now have partnered, right? Um, and members of the hunters have partnered together to be able to secure their release, you understand? But yet they've not had any result. But I think this is a good move because the truth is, um, I mean, in our farm, for instance, we have vigilantes, we have all those, house, um, those guys that carry the local guns, the bows and the yeah. arrows. I mean, if they would, if there would ever be any situation of kidnap or hideout or whatever those they are the people actually that you out. can actually um contact mm -hmm. so they can fish those people out so i think mm -hmm. this is a good move you know for the police to be able to um um find partner with them partner with them yeah so hopefully they'll be able to um, get the but well, 15 yeah, 15 million naira ransom uh, that's another thing you know kidnap has become a very lucrative business in nigeria right now so where we have individuals being kidnapped eat whatever amount that they want to you know <laughs> call is what the um the abductees or the victims actually pay at the end of the day and in some cases those that actually get away with their lives you know are traumatized from it so uh, nobody wants to be kidnapped and 50 million <clears throat> 
at the end of the day, they will still bring it down or they will pay that same amount. It depends. This business is very lucrative. Remember when we talked about ransom and all of that? This yes. business is very lucrative. So if, I mean, 50 million if, are just if, like that. If you, if you, we might go to the university, spend four years or seven years, whatever the case may be, in university, you get out and you, you know, you look for a job and you're being paid 40,000 naira. But if you just, you know, decide to mastermind the kidnap, mastermind the kidnap and what we get over 1 million or 2 million or 50 million as this case may be why should i go through the four walls of a university and stress myself out mm. so i think the earlier we look at what is going on in the country the better the we've more been I think looking about at Nigeria, it um, the more I think we've about been looking Nigeria, at it the more easy I have like because. honestly i think it's nigeria that is actually depressing me it's not really so much of the mm. stress i've been through it's more of the the, the stress of <laughs> Somebody actually said we shouldn't call it banditry because banditry is when somebody actually goes out or some uh, a group of people actually go out with um, uh, machetes and stuff and you know cause a ruckus uh, like we have in the uh, the park. Mm. But in this case, we have people. These are high criminals terrorizing the mm -hmm. country using. Um, whatever means they can with guns everything that they can ammunitions that we haven't i've never seen before mm. so basically this has gone beyond banditry it mm. is total it's, it's close to a state of anarchy hmm. it's really sad honestly and i hope that um we are able to curb this i just hope so because it's actually terrible you know when kidnapping first started you know we were from middle state now at that time, people that are coming from the U.S. would say, ah, no, go Benin, no, you know, kidnappers, yes. they were, no. It was like a joke. But you now know? it has It was spread. almost like, oh, anybody that returns back. I remember my friend, when she was going, she came to, um, she's, she's, she's from Oshun State, uh, Ondo State. Okay. Yeah, Ezi Ileoluji, that's her village. She, okay. They kidnapped her mother. Oh my the God. day, the a day to ha the moms return back to the U.S., they kidnapped, they had to raise, then it was four million naira. This was many years ago. You can now imagine the boldness because nobody, you know, fought this crime. The boldness that they are using now to demand. When I saw 15 million Because millionaires, nobody yeah, has I, been held accountable. There is, we don't know the source. Even the key people that are doing it in the north, basically, we have not clamped them down. Not to talk of those in the south. As well. We the just, south are just little pocket people who I are actually you. looking for people to, you know, victimize. <sighs> and, we'll take a break. And, uh, um, That's not our topic for today, Joe. <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> Depressing. We'll take a break. When we return, please want to talk about how we can get more women in corporate governance, you know, general governance. Stay with us. We'll be right back.